I'm creating an Arduino powered hexapod from scratch. And today I'll be showing you how I went from this to this. Next update video, I'll be adding an attack mode. I can explain. Attack mode is going to be where the hexapod walks on four legs with the front two legs raised and able to jab forward on command. So naturally the first step of that was to figure out how to make it walk on four legs. I would need to completely refactor everything related to the walking code. So I did. It was a massive undertaking. So massive, in fact, that I felt it deserved to be its own video. So attack mode will have to wait. The very first thing I did was attempt to merge crab mode, which is strafing, with normal car mode. I had tried once before, but I just couldn't get it to work. I had a feeling it would work this time though, because of the change where I made each leg movement start at the end of the previous, before it was just completely hard-coded. And I was right. After some debugging, I was able to get it working perfectly. And I'm really glad I was. Splitting up crab mode and car mode was fine, but being able to strafe and turn feels so much more freeing. Also, there's now a considerable skill ceiling to driving this thing. Since all the controls, left, right, forward, backward, rotate, left, rotate, right, are relative to the way the hexapod is facing, it's really easy to get turned around and, I don't know, run into a wall. <laughs> Hypothetically, that would never happen to me. With it finally working, it was time to completely tear it apart. The code, not the hexapod. The current leg timings were very hard coded. There was no way to change them without basically rewriting each gate from scratch. So a complete refactor was the best solution by far. Aside from just making the code objectively better, there were two main additions. The first was adding a way to control how far along each leg started in the walk cycle, kind of like an offset. The second was adding a way to change the percentage of time the leg is pushing compared to lifting. The combination of these two additions would allow me to create any gate I want, if I could get it working. After around an hour and a half of refactoring, the code was in a state where I could actually test it. And to my surprise, it worked first try. I'm not even joking. Oh, wait, I actually was joking. It took four hours of debugging. Cue the montage. It went from stomping in place to sliding in place, back to stomping in place, to whatever on earth this is. Then it just stopped receiving input altogether, so that was fun. Got it unfrozen and was greeted with this. Then it went back to the old classic. Then it started actually working, except for strafing, of course. I fixed strafing, and then a new problem came up. The legs were slowly getting out of sync, and well, yeah, and miraculously, after I fixed that, there were no more issues. It unironically actually worked. In four hours, I went from this to this. The reason they look identical is because they are. The difference is the code. I was now able to easily add new gates. I went from having to duplicate this entire page just to add a new gate to only needing to change a couple of settings. With the newfound ability to add gates in minutes instead of days, I started with wave gate. This is where only one leg is lifted off the ground at any given time. I changed each leg's starting offset to be 16.7% farther ahead than the last, and I set the percentage time on ground to be 83.3%. The walk cycle is a half circle. It's this. And the percentage time on ground is the percent of that walk cycle that the leg is at this part, the flat part. After some debugging, this was the result. This is the gate I'll be using during attack mode since it's the only one that works with four legs that doesn't require balancing. So it was important I got this working first. Next was ripple gate. This is basically tri gate, but none of the legs are in sync. I changed each leg offset to be 16.7% farther ahead than the last with the next leg being always across from the previous. And I set the time on ground to be just over 50%. Now this unironically worked first try, but of course to punish me, the programming god smited one of my servos. I replaced the servo and fortunately Ripplegate still worked. It's easily my favorite gate. It's very spider-like and it's honestly pretty creepy. The final gate I implemented was something I just recently heard of. Are you ready? By gate. This is when two legs are on the ground at a time. The video I saw this in is linked in the description. I implemented this by offsetting the legs in groups of two 
each group 33% farther ahead than the last. And then I set the time on ground to just over 33%. It reminds me a little bit of the Boston Dynamics dog, which is pretty cool to be honest. It's technically the fastest hexapod gait possible, but it's not great how, how I have it working. It, it could use some work. I'll keep trying to tweak it in the future and hopefully a combination of the tweaks plus maybe better servos uh, will we'll get it to perfect, but we'll see. It is seriously really easy to make new gates. If you have any ideas, let me, let me hear them in the comments. I promise the next video will probably be on attack mode. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. I hate asking for this, but it helps YouTube and me know if you actually liked the video. And if you made it this far, I mean, come on, it's the least you can do. Anyway, I hope you did actually like the video. I'll see you in the next one.